Hi, I'm Steve. You can call me Steve. Uh, so the fundraiser didn't quite reach its goal, which is okay, because many fundraisers don't. I got a lot of uh, input. I got a lot of exposure, and I think I broadened my uh, viewer base a little bit. So I'm going to carry on in this fashion, um, see how much more I can spread the word around, and then try again later when I have a broader base to draw from. I'd like to thank David Morgan Marr of a regular webcomic and Dissonance Podcast and The Skeptic Zone for giving me some plugs. <clears throat> I have added links to their uh, projects on the website. Uh, also on the website, I'll be updating it in the next little while to include all the names of the people who claimed the Your Name in Lights prize. Thank you for your support, uh, and I hope you keep watching. <clears throat> So today, it's all about refrigerators, the magic box in the kitchen that keeps your food from going blue and fuzzy. So a fridge is basically a box that divides the universe into two pieces, the inside and the outside. Uh, so heat is transported from the inside to the outside, and then the box is insulated to stop the heat getting back in. So we call this a heat pump. So, right, simple as that, right? Uh, but how is the heat transported? So before I get into that, I need to lay a little bit of groundwork. So show of hands, how many people have boiled water? Really, that many. Have you ever wondered what exactly is happening there? No? Really? I know I have. Stop looking at me like that. Anyway, so what's happening there is we're taking a liquid, we're inputting heat into it and converting it to a vapor. Um, so basically we're turning water into steam using heat. Uh, the entire industrial revolution ran on this principle. <clears throat> so we call the temperature at which this occurs the boiling point. Uh, so you can also convert a liquid into a vapor by playing tricks with pressure. So if you decrease the pressure uh, which the liquid is subjected to, it will boil at a lower temperature. Uh, this process also requires heat, and that heat is absorbed from the surroundings. So you may be familiar with this if you've ever used this. Uh, this is hand sanitizer with the brand name covered up. <clears throat> so this is about 62% ethanol, which is alcohol, and also uh, Twenty-eight percent stuff that will kill you if you drink it, so don't even try it at home, kids. Sorry, that's thirty-eight percent. So once you use it, you'll notice that it feels cold, and it tells you where the location of every single paper cut you have is. That stings a little. So that coolness you feel is the alcohol in the hand sanitizer using your body heat to evaporate. Um, so we also use this to breed unkillable superbugs. So, so now we have a method by which we can absorb heat. We let a vapor, a liquid, boil into a vapor. Uh, so we also have a method to transport that absorbed heat. So liquids and vapors are quite easy to pump from place to place. So we just need some way of that vapor to shed its heat uh, to be converted back into a liquid so we can start the cycle all over again. So I've linked to a Wikipedia diagram down in the comments there. Uh, I tried to insert it into the video and it just wasn't happening. Uh, so if you go and click on that link and look at the picture while I narrate, uh, it'll make a lot more sense. So I will wait while you go and do that. All right. Don't look at me. Go look at the paper. Go. Go. All right. So <clears throat> if you look at the gizmo labeled 4, that's called a compressor. So that applies pressure to the vapor and forces it back into a liquid. Um, so we saw earlier that when a liquid becoming a vapor absorbs heat, and the reverse of that is true, so a vapor condensing back into a liquid releases heat. Uh, so it's, it's a reversible process. So that heat has to go somewhere. So the liquid passes through those red coily things labeled 1 on the left side of the diagram. So these are the coils on the back of your fridge. Uh, if you ever stuck your hand behind the fridge, uh, you may notice they tend to get warm. So that's the heat that used to be inside the fridge, now on the outside of the fridge. It's also why you don't want to put your fridge too close to the wall, because there needs to be some air space in there for the air to carry that heat away and disperse it. Um, where am I? <clears throat> so, so the liquid passes through the, 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 heating co or the heat exchange coils. And when it gets to the end of the coils, it passes through that little bottleneck at the top of the diagram. Uh, that, that plays pressure tricks and allows the liquid to expand back into a gas. So this is where we came in. So this newly expanded gas absorbs heat and then gets pumped through the inside of the fridge wall. So that cools the interior of the fridge, and then it goes back to the compressor, and around and around and around. So, simple as that. Uh, any questions? Sorry, I'm used to a lot of audience. Uh, so I glossed over a few details there, and I kind of blurred the distinction between evaporation and boiling. 
So if anyone has anything they'd like clarified, I can handle it in the comments down there. Uh, okay, there's one more point I want to make here, and it's extremely pedantic. Uh, a lot of people, mostly mothers, uh, will say things like, close the fridge door, you're letting all the cold out. Cold isn't a thing, cold is the absence of a thing. So heat is a thing, cold is the absence of heat. So hot things radiate heat, cold things don't radiate cold. It's the same way that darkness is just the absence of light. Well, yes, I'm extremely fun at parties. Why, thank you for asking. <clears throat> okay, well, thanks for watching. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, if you like this and you want to share it, please do so. You can spread the word on your social medium of choice. We're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we have our own website, and we are here on YouTube. Uh, if you have a topic or a question you'd like to see covered, uh, by all means, send us an email. Uh, Science is not scary at gmail.com. Uh, and see you next time. Thanks for watching.